Welcome to the Wood Turning Workshop. It's getting to be that time of year where it's cold and gray outside, so it gets me to thinking about our annual holiday ornament special. We're going to be making a bell. We're going to have to work on that. Stay tuned. Maybe I shouldn't have used Purple Heart. The Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Tormac, water-cooled sharpeners with innovative jigs and setting devices. Getting your sharpening done quickly gets you back to the job at hand. Tormac, sharpening innovation. Sounds a whole lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> this is going to be a fun project today. And I do want to thank our friend Larry Marley for letting us use his design. It's a really, really neat project. Now, if you look at this closely, the bell is made of walnut. And so we're going to use a 3 by 3 5 piece of walnut to make that shape. And then this is maple, a separate piece. And we're going to use a 3 by 3 by 4 piece to make that. And then we have quilted maple for the handle. And so we have a 1 inch by 1 inch, about 6 inches long for that. And then deep down inside, we have a little Purple Heart bell clacker. So that's what we're going to need to make our project today. So let's start with the walnut bell, because we need to make that first. And let's rough it out on the lathe. The tools we're going to be using for today are a roughing gouge, a spindle gouge, a detail spindle gouge, a hollowing tool with a carbide ring, a parting tool, and a Jacobs chuck. Okay, I've got this roughed down to about two and a half inches in diameter, and I need to cut a tenon on the end that will match the tenon on my chuck. There we go. And I have a bedan that I specially ground down to the angle to match the inside jaws of my chuck, so it makes a bevel, gives it a really strong hold. So we'll start this up. This is the diameter of my jaws. We'll get our cut going here. Take a little bit at a time. Bring this up. Okay, that's close enough. We'll come back, make it a little bit wider. Trail it a bit, scrape it. There, now I have the angle for my jaws. So we're going to take our chuck, mount it on the lathe, take our blank off, move that back, take our knockout bar, call it a knockout bar for a good reason. It knocks things out of the headstock of the lathe. Don't ever forget and leave that in there. It's not a good thing. Don't ask me why I know. Okay, we're going to take our chuck, put it on here. We've got our medium jaws on. And let me undo this, because we don't need our tail stock anymore. Put it down there. Okay, now we're going to mount this in here. The reason we're doing this is because we're going to be hollowing out the bell, and we have to hold this on the lathe in a different manner with the tail stock out of the way. And that's where the jaws come in handy. So anyway, we want to start shaping our bell. We're going to make this little curve part right here. Then we'll make the sweep, but we'll stop, stop shaping it about right there because then we're going to have to hollow. And we need the extra wood back here so we can get inside and make this really nice and thin. Now the first cut I want to make is with a parting tool just to clean up the end here. I'm riding the tool on the wood. I'm not pushing in straight, that'd be scraping. This is doing a little bit more of a cut. Okay, now that's flat. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get it level. I'm gonna go with a large regular grind spindle gouge to start making the tip of the bell. And we're gonna go from high to low, so I gotta come in this way. I'm just sweeping the tool. And I'm using the wide gouge because it helps me make long flowing shapes. I'll take a little bit more out here. The bell's going to go down height a little bit right here, so I'm going to take a little more wood out right there. 
notes because our transition will be right about there. Okay, now I've got that where I want it. We're going to start moving out some of the wood here. Just like you would with a roughing gouge. And that's where that big wide blade comes in handy on this tool because it helps to do that. Now the bell shape is kind of a curve inward from this point, then it starts to curve back outward. So we're going to just swing our body. There we go, we've got our shape going. We're going to clear this out a little bit because we're going to make like a bead shape over here. But we've got to take out a bit of wood yet to get the shape we want. There we go. Now we're really close to the shape we need for our bell. I just want to show a bit of a curve here so I get an idea where the top of the bell is. Okay, now let's do some hollowing. Well, the first bit of hollowing I want to do is to make the inside of the bell match the outside of this rim detail right here. And I'm going to use a small swept back bowl gouge. I'm going to bring the speed up just a little bit. Now I want you to watch my body position. I have the tool angled slightly down, it's into my waist, and I've got the tip here and I'm pushing in, and I'm going downhill because we have ingrain facing us this way. So I want to get an establishing cut into the wood like this. So once I've settled, set my depth a little bit, I'm going to turn now, roll the tool over, and I'm going to swing my body as it makes contact, and take small cuts like that. So you're moving your body almost like a dance. Now let's look at how it looks inside of the bell. You can see I have the tool turned down. It's off basically. I turn it on and it starts cutting. So I'm going to move my way in a little bit more and the bevel of the tool is aiming where I want it to go. And I swing my body you can see how the cut progresses. Now I want this to be about an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I'm going to pull the tool just like that to smooth those two cut lines. Now watch, I need to go a little deeper. So I'm going to come back here. There we go, push in, let the bevel ride in. Now it gets me the hole I need to start the next cut. Okay, one more cut here, I'm going to pull this, there we go, hear how thin that wood is now, just stop that, take a look at it, very nice, we now have that shape, now we need to move on to the drilling. There we go. Now as much as I like hollowing, <laughs> I don't want to spend my whole day hollowing. So I've got my Jacobs chuck loaded up here with a Forstner bit in there. And I want to drill a hole about two and a half inches deep in my bell. And that'll save me from having to cut out all that extra wood. So we'll just go ahead and knock that out real fast. There we go. So now I don't have to waste my time hollowing out that much wood. Now, I want to hollow this the rest of the way, but the bowl gouge is not the right tool for that because it'll start to vibrate. Um, it's not meant for hanging out over the tool rest that long, at least the small one I was using isn't. So we're gonna take our tool rest here, move this to the end. I'm gonna put this just a little bit right about center level, okay? Now I want to show you is we've got a really cool tool here. Instead of using a standard scraper, we're going to be using a carbide cutter on the inside. And the big advantage to this is instead of scraping and making dust, which walnut and I don't mix real well, and that's a bad thing, this will actually take shavings and cut. It's a beautiful tool, really easy to use, and you'd be just amazed at the cut we're going to get with this. Okay, I'm going to pick the speed back up on the lathe. There we go. Okay, the tool you rotate about 45 degrees and watch the contact here. 
Those are beautiful, beautiful shavings. So you come back, take it a little bit more. You just have to be careful that you don't contact the very bottom of it at the same time you're doing the sides here. And the only other thing you have to be very, very careful about is that you don't go through the sides because this thing cuts very quickly and very efficiently. You can even pull with it. See, I caught that end just a little bit. See, it catches when you catch the end like that. Don't do that. Pull with it every time, and you'll avoid that. But this tool will leave a finish on the inside that I won't even have to sand. All you have to do is just keep working your way down in increments to minimize vibration. So I'm just going to keep working on this for a little bit. Once I get it down to about a sixteenth of an inch all the way, I'm going to sand. So while I'm taking care of that, our buddy Bob Fulton, genius of the jig, as a tip for us. When I'm turning bowls, I like to fasten them on the lathe with a chuck, either with a recess or a tenon. And so I needed some way to gauge that tenon size. So I made a gauge and so that I can check the maximum and the minimum tenon or the maximum recess and the minimum recess. And then I can put this on my lathe on my bowl and check the exact size and then I know that that will fit into my tenon, into my chuck and I can put it on there and hold it and that makes it a lot easier with the gauge. That's my tip for today. Keep turning and have fun. That man has forgot more about wood turning than I've ever learned. <laughs> okay, I've sanded this down to 320 grit. It's hollowed out. Really cool thing about this part of the turning is you don't have to worry about how clean it is up here because we're going to be covering the top of the bell with the other part of the maple there, the leaf part. So I do want to part this off. And like I said, it doesn't have to be, let me turn that up. I had it slowed down for my sanding. It doesn't have to be a perfectly clean cut. Now one thing I also did was I took a 1 16th inch drill bit and drilled a hole through the top of the bell. You can't really see it, but we're going to be using that later and that'll help us uh, hang the little purple heart ball from the inside. So our next step is we want to start working on turning the maple cover for the bell. Now for the last few minutes, I've been very carefully hollowing out the inside of the maple lid that's going to go on our bell. And I've been test fitting this to make sure it fits nice and snugly to the shape. And that's really pretty good. So I'm going to leave that right there. Now I've gone ahead and shaped the outside also to kind of match the bell. You can see how it follows the shape. And I sanded that to 320 grit. What I want to do right now is to make four marks that are 90 degrees to each other and I'm just roughing this in by hand. It doesn't have to be perfect because I want it to look kind of craftsy. I don't want, we're not going to achieve art today. <laughs> Heaven knows I'm not good at carving or drawing. So that's my first shape and then I'm going to, now I know where my leaf designations are, so I'm going to come in here and draw just a rough leaf shape and I'm going to cut out here. So once I get these drawn out, I'm going to take a coping saw and remove the wood I don't need. Okay, coping saw really does a good job of shaping out these leaves. And like I said, this is more of a craft look than an art look because heaven knows I don't consider myself an artist. Okay, so we're right about there. I'm going to come back here real quick. Complete that cut. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Give me that little nib there. Okay, cool. Now, we have our little stems right here that we want to put on the leaf to give it a little shape. So, I'm all for power tools, so we're going to use a power carver, and I've got a V blade in here. 
put that right where I want it. Okay, now we're going to make our stem show up. See, all I'm doing is a line on either side. There we go, now you can get the idea. And this doesn't have to be beautiful. We are just making a rough shape right now because we want texture more than anything and just give the illusion that this is a leaf here. There we go. This one, there we go. There. Because I'm going to finish all these up and then we're going to come in with a different shape blade to make the relief of the leaf. I got all these carved in here, but you know, before we go to the last carving tool, I want to take a rasp and start working these edges into a rounded shape. That will make the leaves look a little bit more delicate, a little thinner than they are right now because it's all an illusion here. We left this about a little more than an eighth of an inch thick for strength. But anyway, I round this down now, and then when I start using the carving tool to add our texture, It'd be a smoother transition between the two cuts. You can even use this tool to come in here with an angle and smooth out the transition between the two leaves going to each other. And like I said, we're after texture more than we are art here, <laughs> which is a good thing for me. <laughs> Okay, a little bit of rasping, a little bit of sandpaper. <laughs> it's starting to look like a leaf in some spots. Now for the next step, I want to use the spindle lock on my lathe so this holds steady while I carve because I don't want this thing rotating around. And I've changed out the blade on my power carver with a slightly dished curved blade because I just want to make scooping motions here. And like I said before, this isn't exactly uh, art here. This is just going for effect. Let me turn that up a little bit. And I want to scoop up. Go down, scoop up. Go down, scoop up. I want to leave these marks to make it look like I carved this. Now if you have hand tools at home, feel free to use them. Like I said, if it's got a motor on it, I'm happy with it. <laughs> And blend that in there so we have that stem there so we have that separated out. Scoop it a bit more. You can see how it's working. Move to the other side of the stem. Oops, took a little bit of it off. That's okay. I'll just keep working my way around. So I got all the leaves scooped out like I like them. Well, I've done a little more shaping and I've almost got this ready to part off. A little sanding done here. I'm taking a little flap disc sanding disc and I'm just very carefully taking off some of the high spots on the shape and also taking off any leftover pencil marks I might have and that will help smooth things out Gives it a nice look, instead of being so harsh. But, you see, like I said, I was just going for texture. Just the illusion of the leaf. I didn't want to uh, make this look like excellent carving because it's just not my repertoire. Anyway, I'm going to take the parting tool, start a cut in here. I want to clean that up really nicely right there. Make a relief cut. Now remember, I have a hole drilled in here because that's going to accept the tenon from the handle we're getting ready to turn. So you got to be ready to catch this. Don't put your fingers on the tips or that will hurt. There we go. Nicely done. This quilted maple is going to be really remarkable looking once we get done here. I like the figure in it very much. I'm just matching up those little holes I made with my punch. That lets me get some something centered very easily on my lathe and we're going to rough this out and we have a six inch blank here but we're probably going to use about five inches of it because that's all we need for the handle and get that started 
Get my eyes on, bring the speed up. Since this is spindle turning, I can bring the speed up quite a bit. Once we have this roughed out, we'll start shaping the handle. Now I need to make a mark where my tenon is going to be. It's going to be right about here. And you hear that vibration? That is why I'm stopping short of making the tenon the size I need it right now because if I go ahead all the way down to the uh, diameter I need, I'll get way too much vibration and I won't be able to finish the rest of the handle. So I'm just taking a little bit of wood off here. What I want to do is make a bead right here in the middle. And as always, you sneak up on a bead. We're just making delicate cuts, and I'm using my shallow detail gouge, which has a sharper point and allows me to make these nice, tight cuts. A wider gouge wouldn't fit in here. There we go. Roll the tool, lift the handle. That looks good. Let's move over to this side of the bead. And actually, I want to have a very sharp transition here. So I'm going to roll the tool. Get that a little bit rounder. There we go. That looks good. Clean up this transition. Okay, nice and sharp. I'm going to bring this down to the same diameter of the bead. Okay, now I'm going to start sweeping my way down the handle and make a nice delicate handle all the way to the end we're going to make another ball and a nice shape on that Now with my Jacobs chuck mounted with a 1 16th inch bit, I'm going to use the dimple left from my tailstock to drill a hole into the handle. And that's going to receive one of our hooks here in a second that we're going to hang the clacker from. And on the tip, I'm going to drill another hole and that will give us our hook to hang the ornament from the tree. Now just like a bead, you got to make a clacker sneak up on it and you can see I've drilled a hole through the bottom of the clacker bead all the way through because that's where our string is going to pass and that's how we're going to hang it inside the bell. Okay I have all my pieces here and I went ahead and took my clacker and pre-threaded it with a string and this is actually a fish hook right here. And the cool thing about it is it has little tiny barbs there. And that's going to help us because we need to slide this up inside of the bell. And those little barbs are going to hang on to the handle. Because remember, we drilled a hole in the handle. So we assemble this. We have the bell. We have our leaves that go on top. We have our handle with the tenon that goes on there. We glue all that together. Once it's glued, I'd go ahead and put a finish on it. And then on the very top up here, we have that hole. So we can put in, easier said than done, <laughs> there we go, put in the little hook. And that's why we left the string so long, because when we fit this up in here, now our clacker hangs out. All we have to do is slide it in further, tie the knot, and it's in just like the one on this one. And speaking of this one, I promised this one to a very special friend. Oh, thank you. I promised Hagen he got the first ornament this year. I guess the other thing I owe Hagen is a chance to 
<laughs> Get his dignity back. Can we kiss? Can we kiss? No, oh, thank you so much. Oh, good. Can I five? Oh, nice high five too. <laughs> Until the next time on the Wood Turning Workshop, keep turning. Oh, the things mama does to you. I know it's so tough being you in it. Ah, oh, boy. Okay. No, it's all gone. Honest. Really? Nothing. Oh, that's just. <laughs> The Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Tormac, water cooled sharpeners with innovative jigs and setting devices. Getting your sharpening done quickly gets you back to the job at hand. Torment, sharpening innovation. Next time on the Wood Turning Workshop. Came out here for some inspiration and some fish. Right now it looks like I'm just gonna find inspiration, I think. Whoa, and speaking of inspiration, I think I have a great idea. Today we're gonna make the popper lure. Uh, this is gonna be the 3 8 ounce version. The main thing is people try to paint too fast and you gotta keep it moving. Speaking of fishing, this one's finished. Let's go fishing. Really? Yeah. I thought You're you ready. <laughs> For more information about the Wood Turning Workshop, visit our website at rsupublictv.org. Okay, everybody gets treats. Everybody gets treats. Okay, there you go. Yes, you can have a treat. You can have a treat too. You can have a treat too. Yes, Mr. Reindeer, you want a treat? Okay. He doesn't look so tough with that on, does he, huh? To purchase a copy of this program, please call 1-800-823-7210 or visit our website, rsupublictv.org. This week on the Wood Turning Workshop, it's that time of year, it's time for our annual Christmas episode. We're going to be making a holiday bell. We're going to have to work on that. And watch the contact here. I'm just very carefully taking off some of the high spots on the shape. Well, I promised Hagen he'd get the Christmas ornament this year. 